Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a lovely afternoon here at the Nürburgring for my first laps in the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Now we've had quite the EV adventure with the Schmiermobile heading all the way from London to Munich and back up here to Nürburgring where tonight is Touristenfahrten, the tourist drives and an opportunity to experience what this is all about. Now it's going to be quite a busy evening, there's been a race today, there are a lot of people around and the weather is on side but there are a few things about the Taycan that leave me slightly anxious. The first being that this is a 760 horsepower electric car so how is the state of charge going to hold up during some laps? The second is what about the temperatures and potential risk for overheating of the batteries and the motors? And finally, what about the tyres? Because this is by no means a lightweight car. Nonetheless, we're going to be heading out in a moment, getting everything ready to experience the Taycan here at the Green Hell. We're already about 1,800 kilometers, so around 1,100 miles into this European electric adventure. We have splatted many bugs along the way. We've been to many charging stations and found the VMAX, the top speed of the car, on the de-restricted German Autobahn at 269 kilometers an hour. That's 167 miles per hour. Now the car is actually sat here, believe it or not, on 100%, and that has taken a fair bit of preparation, I have to say. If we just wake it up quickly, we have 100% and officially 278 kilometers of range, although I guarantee that will not be the case when we start putting the foot down on the autobahn. Now, the reason I say it took some preparation is the nearest rapid charger is about 30 kilometers away. So by the time you get here, you're on about 90%. There aren't really any fast chargers at all here in Nürburgring. So I've had to leave it running for quite a few hours on a regular main socket to get it to 100% to ensure we can do as many laps now as possible. But I think the session is shortly to begin. I've still slightly lowered my tyre pressures but I'm going to be keeping quite the eye on those. We have the massive carbon ceramic brakes on the Taycan Turbo S and of course we've got the lovely gold wheels, green, midnight green wrap, the extra carbon from Zyrus Engineering and I think all said and done it's time to hop on board and take this over to the entrance of the Green Hell. As expected it is very very busy. We're currently in normal. I'm going to put this into Sport Plus. We'll get the lovely electrical whirs. We are currently on 98% battery question is how much will we have at the end of a lap I reckon maybe 35% less let's find out so foot down <laughs> this thing is so crazy fast as we're out now on the Nürburgring Nordschleife the North Loop remember tourist in Farten is of course tourist drives it's a public toll road effectively overtaking only on the left it is not a race there is no prize there is no timing it is a public road always just like to remind that it's about having fun and I think that's what today is going to be having now done quite a few laps recently on the sim back at the Schmuseum the electrical whirs are so cool god the instant power and torque is mad <laughs> heavy on the brakes as we come through Sabine Schmidt's curve the corner named after her a lot of traffic around today as we snake our way through this thing is fast considering how big and heavy it is just gonna watch out for potential understeer so letting me know that the brakes and their cooling playing up just a little bit concentration mode as we now unleash the first very fast section already down to 94% through 200 kilometers an hour Woo, jumping around a little bit the numbers get crazy crazy high this is very very fast but obviously without the sound of an engine running up through the revs you don't have anything like the same sensation just that I'm driving a very fast very heavy car and all of a sudden I'm very aware of quite how heavy it is as well. Watching out, making sure we're good for the brakes. We've got the big carbon ceramics, but there are still, as I said, a lot of cars around and some very, very technical and tricky corners here at the Nordschleife as we come through Arenburg now. <laughs> Tires squealing away. 
wow, that speed through there was actually really quite quickly. This is effectively a one direction highway toll road open from time to time, 200 plus kilometers an hour. I'm just gonna back it off to just under to go through the foxhole. Very aware of, let's say, the lack of aero in here compared to some of the cars that are more frequently driving around some of the other Schmiemobiles. <laughs> Feeling the car moving around, the way it delivers power is totally bizarre. I've done an EV lap before in the Polestar 2, but obviously never in my own EV. Watching the tyre pressures inflating very quickly. Put them down to 2.6 and 2.7 bar before the lap. We're up to 2.8 all round already. I love the feel of this. It's obviously much more connected than my experiences of taking Teslas on track, being a Porsche. They did a lot of testing and development work out here. And in fact, in lap record conditions, obviously with closed track, you're not allowed to time on Tourist and Farton. They actually did a 742 with a pre-series car, which is not all that bad. So we come around the miss hit miss. Slightly less busy track now. So we come towards the siphon, good old slowest corner. But slowest corner in this is not slow. The crazy thing is when you're back on the power, it just goes and goes and goes. Watching the line through here. So we come now to Bergwerk, very heavy braking zone. We've got a bit of regen going on as well. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm sure on the video, it does not look as fast as it feels just because of the lack of sound, but it feels very, very, very fast, believe me. <laughs> Quite a few minis out today. Down to 81%. That's going down very, very quickly. The interesting question is, will we be able to do a full second lap without having to charge up. <laughs> I wonder what the answer to that is going to be very shortly. This is mad. I'm starting to get a little bit more confident with it. The dynamics feel very, very different to driving in most cars that I'm more familiar with driving. As we come now towards the carousel, up the top after Style Strecker, lots of cars up ahead. Every corner. It's so quickly back on the power. It's so busy here at the carousel as well. Good, we're not scraping. I was slightly worried about that. And away we go. different noises going on. The electrical whirs mixed with a lot more tyre noise than you would normally be listening to as we haul this gigantic lump of Taycan around the Nürburgring. In some ways, it's almost a little bit sickening not having those traditional sensors from it. Thank you to all of the kind drivers making it possible to squeeze on through. Little jump. To be honest, it actually rode that very cleanly. The suspension pretty much absorbed the entirety of it. I'm more familiar with much, much stiffer cars 
around here than this to go over the next little drop there. There are very, very fast segment of the Nordschleifer. Wow, you know what? I'm actually going to cool it down from here. I'm going to pull to the right because I'm very conscious that the brakes have taken an absolute beating and I just want to let it roll around towards the end of the loop knowing quite how busy it is. That was fairly mega for a first lap electric drive in the Taycan at the Nürburgring. 72% at the moment, obviously we're not quite all the way back yet. But we'll just roll it on through down the Dottinger with a lot of cars up ahead of us and let it cool down a little bit. We've got three bar all around, 3.1 in the rear left. Those got very high in terms of pressures very, very quickly. Hence why it felt a little bit like it was floating around towards the end and a little bit understeery as a result. But what a cool first lap. Let's take a couple of minutes and get ready to do it all again. There's a lot going on here, but now that the main car park has opened back up, this is where we pulled in and I'm gonna try and do this without getting squished by the M3 CS. Parking. <laughs> it's very, very busy. We need to get these pressures down so that we can go and do this again. Um, at the moment, as we said, just over three bar, which is mad for this kind of thing. 2.9. I'm going to take it down to 2.7. Do this all around. And then we'll go in a moment and do it all again. We head out again then, lap two, this time starting at 71%. We shall see what happens, but foot down. It is just absurd how quickly this thing accelerates up to, let's say 200 kilometers an hour or so, and then obviously runs out a little bit. But that instant go is where it's quite, oh, as we feel the compression there, is where it's really quite impressive. Firm on the brakes. I tell you what's behind me though, is a Solar Beam GTR Pro that I'm letting straight through. I cannot wait to have my Solar Beam GT Black Series out here. It's not going to be long until we can see that. But the colour looks so cool, especially in the evening sun. So we meander through the corners here. It's looking busy ahead. This is one of the fun things, right? There are so many different cars. People have come from so many different places to drive here on the most grueling track in the world, the most famous track in the world, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, which you can drive as a public toll road. Now we've got the tires saying they're slightly underinflated at the moment. That is not a surprise. That is by intent. As we now go around and back down towards Foxhole, just watching out slightly here as we go through. Down some of the bumps. Oh, we've got a Tesla in front of us. Watch out which line it's going to take through here. Not, not quite enough space. And away we go up the hill on the other side, over the curbs, and around towards Adenauer Forst. Feeling some of the understeer there. The noise of the tyre squeal. It's such a different sensation. As we're back full power down to 61% now. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad at all. I thought it would use so much more. We're still gonna to need to find a rapid charger again later though. Tight in through Bergwerk. And away up the hill, past a lot of the traffic. Watch out through here. I feel like it's not a problem scrubbing off some speed in here because you get it back again instantaneously. Back on the power. It 
it's so fast. I've also got to remember that I am not driving the GT4 Club Sport that I've been driving on the sim, which is so close to reality, it can be a little bit, sometimes confusing, what you're actually doing. But in here, we are in the Taycan. It is not a small, nimble, track prepped race car. So watch out what's happening here. Super in front of us, of course, through the carousel. Round the concrete blocks. Never really any time to be gained there. Thank you to the Supra driver, very much appreciated. Indicating, just tucking over slightly to let us hurtle this thing through. Oh, this just absolutely flies through here. Oh, we jumped there. A little bit of understeer, gotta watch out for that one. Bright sunshine. Can't really see much. Awesome. Around Galgenkopf we go then. The final corner. And there we have it for today. We're on 48%. I am amazed by that. We only used 24% on the second round, which makes sense because there were a few slower sections, yellow flags, etc. So we've only gone through 51% to do two laps at decent pace around the Nürburgring. It's not gone completely crazy and overheated. The tires are certainly at the hot end, no question about that. But this is where we can pop it back into normal if we wish. Nice, gentle, quiet, calm roll back towards base. Two very enjoyable laps in the Taycan Turbo S at the Nürburgring. We're back and immediately into the barn at Apex to plug the Taycan in, to get it charged up. We've got the charger plugged in on the other side at the moment, thanks to their electricity. If I just quickly wake this up, we've come back, as you can see, with 47% charge, now charging up at 9.88 kilowatts, which is not the fastest in the world, but 47% is a decent amount left. To be honest, it is enough when we've topped it up another five to 10% to get to the rapid charger we're intending to use on our next leg of the journey. And that was really quite impressive, more so than I expected, to be honest. Of course, we didn't have any overheating issues. We haven't used anywhere nearly as much charge as I feared we might end up using. Tires held up well. And to be honest, you can tell that Porsche clearly designed, engineered, and tested these to be driven hard. After all, it is wearing a Turbo S badge despite not having a turbo. And that is one that I'm sure the debate will rage on about pretty much forever. But in terms of performance, it delivers. It's very, very fast, very capable. And despite being a very heavy lump, was actually pretty nifty around the Nürburgring. A lot of fun, even though it was very busy out there today, as expected, but always a great time. And now another Schmiemobile that has done its first laps here at the famous Nürburgring. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. As always, I hope you've enjoyed these laps with the Taycan and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.